say a few words about uh, the book that Rashid uh, Ogunlaru has recently written? Well, um, yes, I'm, well, I've read some of it. I'm really, really looking forward to reading the rest of it. And um, I just happen to think it's going to be a very, very important book. Probably more important even than Rashid knows. Um, do you want to share? Yeah, why do you think that? Because I think the time is right now for this sort of thinking to come about. Um, I think this book could be as, 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 as uh, important as uh, No Logo by Naomi Klein in as much as there's a lot of problems in the world, everybody knows about it, and we really need to do something about it immediately. So, this, and this sort of thinking is the sort of thinking that is so desperately needed. Um, could you share with me how, how the, the, you know the chapter on clarity and how clarity, clarity in business is really powerful. Just share, just share a couple of a minute on that. Sure. Sometimes people, because of so much to do in the business, people lose track of what they can achieve or do. Uh, and, and, and sometimes people become very much in the business, not on the business. So clarity is a way to be on the business, meaning to see the business uh, from distance. So that uh, when you have a, a, a moment of difficulties or struggle, you can see the picture and the solution uh, uh, for the business, for the success of the business, or, or, or clients or customers or other stakeholders alike. And he really defines it. And this is why he also talks to a lot of people who have both uh, pain and pleasure in doing business and he, he, he puts a solution. That's what it is. And thinking clear way or having a clarity of the vision or the way forward is the best way and that's what he does in the book and I really like that. <laughs> yes. But was there one bit that really stuck out and represented something for you in your own journey? Yeah, what I liked really was it wasn't like really wishy-washy as much as it was actually a lot of practical action steps. And I think a lot of people when they look at the title and they look at the cover, it's not really cool, but they might think, oh, that's like really uh, much more focused on the spiritual side or the, you know, um, the personal development side. But it is that, but it's also really like focused on action. So I like that. Nice. Uh, Thank you very much. Cool. Today is actually your day. Um, I, I don't really need to read from this because you're living it. You're a living embodiment of this particular book. The book is about those people who want to follow their heart and build a business that they will love based on their own values, their own principles. Here we are in this particular space that's developed for creatives as a place for them to stop, to connect, to do their business, and for all sorts of things to kind of happen. And really for me, one of the things that I really was very clear about from this launch is that I wanted it as an opportunity for all those magical, wonderful people that I meet, a couple of them we've already heard from, in order for you all to be able to stop and to make those connections. The book's about seven essential principles. And one of those principles, plus one, one of those principles is conversations. But very often, for example, when I run my workshop at the British Library, I'm their partner, business coach, I look down the list of all the people who are there, all those people who are starting business, all those people who have been in business for some time, all those people in transition in business. And very often, the conversations that need to take place never take place. Often we forget that ultimately we are interconnected, we're interrelated, we're ultimately of one, but we often forget that. Every single person, every single business is in transition. All of you. I'm lucky enough to know many of you, have worked with many of you, and so on. Everything, everybody. But I think we often forget about that magic and that power. So I really do want you to make sure that you have rich conversations. I invite you to see if you can have seven <laughs> conversations today. The seven themes, maybe one about clarity. Where are you at now? Maybe one conversation about your customers. Who are your customers? Maybe one conversation about the courage and the courage that you're, that you're gonna need now or the courage that it's taken you to get to this very point. I want you to talk about cooperation. What's the kind of support that you need? Been talking to a couple of what's the kind of support that you need next? Conversations, just have that weird and wacky conversation and connect. Creativity, here we are in a space for creatives. How could you be a little bit more creative? Compassion, are you doing what you love? Are you doing what you love with love? And the last thing, of course, is change. We're in changing times, and that brings us on to this particular book. Business is changing. Very few people go into business purely to make money. They go into a business to make a difference, to make an impact to change their lives, to change the lives of their families. 
But pretty soon, soon down that road, we tend to forget that, and it becomes mundane. It becomes very, very mundane. So one of the things I want to invite you to do is just take this time here to pause, to reflect, and to celebrate the journey that you've already been on and what it is that's already brought you here. But then to be outward facing. Where are your customers at? Where are they at? What do they need? Are you connecting with them? Are you seeing them as partners in this journey, or are you just seeing them as cash in the till? Most people just see them as cash in the till. And we complain when we're customers and we see people as cash in the till. How are you going to get the business that you want without having those conversations? And everybody in a way is your customer, your staff, your boss, your partner, your best friend. Everyone's a customer. But we kind of forget that because we live these kind of very isolated um, lives. But also, I, I wanted to write this book for two audiences of people, two very clear audiences of people. One of those people are very, very traditionally business-minded. Maybe you've been in business, maybe some of them in this room, maybe you've been in business for a long time. Maybe you're very logical-minded, maybe the business is doing financially very, very well. But are you having the life balance? Are you, are you getting the fun and the joy back from it? Or perhaps the personal relationships in your own personal life, your own personal time, your own health, are they taking a back seat? This book is an invitation for you to reconnect yourself and to be compassionate to yourself and to ask you what can business be about for you now. But this book is also, and I think this will resonate with many of you in the second category, those creative entrepreneurs, the teachers, leaders and healers, of which many of you in this room are, the creatives. Very often creative people feel as though business isn't for them, business is for somebody else. I'll include the healers and the therapists and the many of You often kind of feel as though business is, is for somebody else, but it's not, it's for you. Business is born of creativity, that's what business is. It's time that we claim, reclaimed that. And how is it that you can be creative? You're creative. How is it that you can be creative in your business? You're magically creative when you're creating the art, when you're making the music, when you're doing whatever it is, when you're creating film. But how could you be creative about building your business from that space, from your own heart, from your own ethics? That's where we're at. And that's the possibility of where we're at. Okay, I'm here with uh, Sh Shabazz, isn't it? Yeah. Shabazz. And Shabazz has recently read, started to read the book. Yes, I have. All right. And what did you say? You're going to do what? I'm going to start using a lot of the things in the book. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to steal a lot of the ideas and maybe <laughs> pass them off with my own. I'm sure she won't mind. I particularly like the two-page business plan, but there's a lot of stuff in there that's just so simple to use. And, and, and that's the key thing about any kind of business, I think. If it's quick and easy to do, what's stopping you from doing it? Yeah, I like that. And, and, and um, what, what's your, what, what, what's the, uh, where are you putting your talents to at the moment? What's your profession? Uh, I'm an accountant and tax advisor. I help people start businesses, get businesses from being tiny to the next level, uh, and hopefully make a lot of money and be really satisfied by doing their business as well. So sole traders right up my street. Which of the C's in the book really, I know that you like them all, but which of the C really is, you know, rings to me? I think it's courage. And I think as someone who has kind of had the highs and then had the lows of failing, there's a big temptation to just play small. And I think every time you come out and you want to do something new, it takes a huge amount of courage to, to kind of face your fears. And so for me, facing your fears and trying to play the bigger game, even if you're, you know, you've got all eyes on you, and some people actually are looking for you to fail, you know, and so there's a big pressure in coming out and doing stuff and dancing on the platform, you know, the business platform, so I think for me, courage is the biggest thing, every time you step on stage, every time you do a new business, every time you try and do something that's in the public eye, it's, uh, it's really facing that fear. I'm outside with Lawrence of Rashid Ogilawi's book launch. Lawrence, just wanted, I, I overheard you sharing a wonderful story about your autism and how Rashid helped. Do, would you share a few words on that? When imagine? I first went to Rashid, he said, when I, he said, well, tell me about yourself. And I said, I'm autistic. I've got Asperger's syndrome. And he listened to me with his whole heart. He said to me, Lawrence, I want you to try and imagine that you don't have autism. You don't have Asperger's syndrome. That what you've got is just a label. Imagine a newborn baby. There's nothing about autism. There's nothing about Asperger's syndrome and and what he wasn't able to me to do for me was a was to teach me how to think differently um, he actually used a metaphor uh, looking at the weather he said think about the weather the weather does what the weather does you've got forecasters who forecast the weather there's no 
one who can actually say what the weather's going to do. It's it one day it might be sunny in the morning, in the afternoon it could be snowing or it could be a thunderstorm. It's the same with the mind. You can't stop the mind from thinking. But what you can do is you can influence how you think. So, but to be honest with you, I don't even want to talk about Rashid's book, I want to talk about Rashid. Yes. For me, Rashid is what I always define as the quiet storm. You know, he's one of those people that gently has a major impact on your life without even trying. He's the most generous, spirited person that I know. And I think tonight's launch for his book is totally indicative of the type of man that he is. And the people that are here are genuinely here in a world that is always so busy and so full of the big B, then people have actually made time to be with somebody who's genuine, who has purpose, who has clarity, and is just a true angel on this planet. So it's been a real honor knowing him. I noticed that you've got a soul trainer in your bag. Yes, I was tempted. <laughs> I came to Rashi's book launch, and I just think he's, he's a really genuine guy. Um, I had some coaching sessions with Rashid about a year ago, and he just helped me so much. He, he's really like a guy from the soul, but he's got the business acumen as well and I'm looking forward to reading his book because I think it's going to encompass everything that he's said in all the sort of business workshops that he's done. You mentioned something yeah. earlier I just want to touch on you said something lovely earlier about spirit and spirit in business oh, Yeah. so you know do you yeah. want to just, just share a little um, bit on that? I think what, what, what Rashid has is, is the, the element he's looking for every time is the spirit of the person he's not just looking for um, um, skills he's looking to help the person draw out their absolute element of themselves, the spirit of themselves, and that's what is, makes him special. Mm. That's what his passion is. He's there to help people find their truth. That's why he's called his book Soul Trader, you know, <laughs> because he's talking about the soul, and, yeah. and he's, he's, he's an expert at that. Well, I find Rashid has a lovely combination. He's, he's very good at relating to people's emotions and how they feel, and yet he, he retains his objectivity while he's relating to them. And that's a great trick, and he does it very, very well. It makes him a very, very powerful coach in my eyes. Nothing that's out of integrity can kind of survive through.